Hi, my name is Chanel. Welcome to my bookbinding studio. This is week two of the 100 day project where I'm trying to create a new book every day. For my first book, I decided to try dyeing my own paper. I've always wanted to try natural dyeing and I've read that avocados create a pink dye, which made me really curious. I boiled a few avocado skins for almost an hour and it produced this reddish brown pigmented water. A couple people later told me that it's actually the avocado pits that create the pink color, so I'm going to try that in the future. In a cake pan, I spoon some dye onto some plain white Lakta paper and just let it sit for a minute or so. And then I squeezed out all the water and laid it flat to dry in the sun. I used the paper to make some front and back covers and then I made a little sketchbook with Coptic stitch. I think the paper turned out beautifully and it also shows some wrinkles from me wringing out the water, which was unintentional, but I like how natural it looks. I can't wait to experiment more with natural dyes. The additional stitching you see on the front cover is purely aesthetic. As I'm stitching on the front cover, I weave the thread around to create a design. I went with this pattern to make it look like it's mimicking stab binding. For my second project, I'm making an accordion book in the shape of a triangle. I followed a tutorial from this book I picked up at a used bookstore. It really came in handy because I didn't have an idea for this day. When I saw the triangle shape, I immediately thought of dumplings I ate growing up. In Cantonese, we call them zong, and they're usually either sweet or savory. Fillings such as red bean, eggs, nuts, dates, mushrooms, meat, would be covered with sticky rice and then wrapped again with lotus leaves. I'd usually eat them with sugar, and they're definitely a comfort food for me. So I wanted the triangle book to loosely resemble a zhong. I did that by wrapping cotton twine around it like an actual dumpling would be wrapped. This book design feels really playful and I can already imagine many more variations of this book.
On Wednesday, I took a break and we went to the Academy Museum to see the Miyazaki exhibit and I had a great time. So that's why there's only four books in this video. I was really looking forward to making this book because I've been envisioning it for a couple months now. I'm a casual follower of fashion content online and the transparent and translucent trend was really interesting to me. And so I found this iridescent vinyl to use as a book cover that I'm going to sew the pages directly into. Since the vinyl is going to wrap around the pages, I wanted the book to feel like a diary. And so I went with thicker signatures for a chunkier look. I went with long stitch for the binding and I'm gonna leave some more sewing footage here because some of you showed some interest and curiosity about it.
I rounded the corners of the outside flap and sewed on some snap buttons. It looks great as is, but the covers really needed more, so I made strips of fringes and layered them onto the front cover. This was when I wished I had a sewing machine because it was so tedious to sew by hand. I'm very happy with the result. I love the transparency of the vinyl, how it shines in the light, and how different it is from my usual style. For my final book, I wanted to make a front cover that would open with multiple hinges. I started cutting the chipboard like so with a quarter inch space between each piece. I learned at the end that the front cover will actually end up smaller than the back cover because the paper will pull these gaps together. I hope that makes sense. So I ended up with a front cover that is an eighth of an inch smaller than the back cover. I've never tried a ribbon closure before, so I thought I would try it with this design since the front cover might be a bit floppy with these moving pieces. I chose to bind this book with stab binding, so I'm using a Japanese screw punch to make holes into the covers as well as the pages. It actually took me a really long time to make the holes all line up. I find that with stab binding, for me it's always hard to keep the papers firmly set together. I did my best with a bag clip and a couple awls. I struggled with the sewing too because the holes were just a bit too small for my needle and thread. Making this hinged cover was such a fun experiment and I can finally say goodbye to my fear of book hinges and joints. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this week's projects. Let me know which one is your favorite. I'll talk to you very soon.